metalheads hey my dear friends it's doro pesh and before we go to date night with doro please subscribe to border city rock talk and i see you very soon <laughs> hey everybody thanks for tuning in to border city rock talk you get great news great interviews great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch do as doro just told you to do and hit the subscribe button comment and like and uh, all that jazz before further ado i bring to you doro pesh how are you doing very good thank you so much for having me on your show and we're doing good and actually i'm ready to hop on a plane <laughs> and then we are playing the milwaukee metal fest on friday the 17th and that's yeah, right so we'll, we'll put excited. links we'll put links down below but i wanted to test my german the yeah. gate is there the gate is there yeah. Oh, sehr gut, sehr gut, and you sound perfect, and I know your name is Ernest, that sounds very German, maybe you have German grandmas, maybe, grand maybe. <laughs> is it pronounced Ernest or Ernst? Uh, Ernst, Ernst, it's okay. uh, E-R-N-E-S-T, -E so Ernst, uh, but Ernest is, uh, I heard it before as well, so yeah. <laughs> I prepared my second line of German in case you were to speak German to me. I was going to say, Tut mir leid, das ist alles, was ich Deutsch kann. Uh, it... Oh man, I do it again. I, I, okay. I'm not sure if you understood what you said. Tut mir leid, das ist alles, was ich Deutsch kann. Sorry, that's all the German I know. Ah, uh, okay. The first one was perfect. Tut mir leid. That means I'm sorry. That's always good to say. Uh, but uh, the rest, I, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not Alice, sure. Alice. Uh, anyways, <laughs> let's not waste all my subs our subscribers' time on me and my stupid, not stupid, me and my German. They want to hear about you. So, yes, you were coming uh, to North America. Yes, but um, thank you so much for trying. That was that was ex excellent. <laughs> thank you so much. Actually, a cab a cab driver taught me how to say the first part. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, cab driver was was smart. And I tell you, when I first came to America, they I was stuck in a room and I had like forty interviews to do. We just released our third album. It was True Steel. And I couldn't understand anybody. And then the lady came back in from the record company. She said, and how, how did the interviews go? And I said, oh, great. And <laughs> I was just waiting, waiting for people to just hang up on the phone because it was so, it was so hard. So, so learning a, another language is definitely is not easy. So I, and, uh, but when I stayed in America, then it was much easier and you know when when you have no chance to talk german anymore so that was actually the key you're immersed but actually, in it i'm always traveling and yeah, i talk german and in our band we have many different languages uh, our guitar player bill hudson he's brazilian he has american part passport but sometimes i hear his brazilian and we have a dutch guitar player italian guitar player so so we are all a big family and it's a yeah, it's 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 a total mush of everything, which which is actually great. Uniting it's hands with... everybody knows what's going on by the end of the day. Well, there's a the good thing too is if somebody's pissed off at another band member, they can speak their mother tongue under their breath, and nobody really knows what they said. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so... actually, I must say we are all, always like it's it. We are always very everybody's very kind there were never fights going on and since all these 40 years i'm doing it i i didn't i didn't hear one one fight in our tour bus or so it's all pretty pretty cool pretty pretty good people awesome so the the, the last album was congress uh forever strong and proud a couple of my favorite songs were love or love breaks chains and heavenly creatures but Obviously, we're going to be talking, just to let the viewers know, we're going to be talking about uh, the big news with uh, the Pretty Reckless as well. But uh, Rob Halford comes into the picture. He uh, does duets with you, Living After Midnight, and Total Eclipse of the Heart. Yes, that yes. Was a, I love the, the, the duet you did with him especially. Um, how did that come about? Actually, yeah, we... Uh... It was about two years ago and we played a big festival in France. It's called Hellfest. It's huge. It's something like oh, yeah. Wacken. 
big, big. So we were playing um, on the same day and we were like talking backstage and stuff. And actually it was my very first big tour in 1986 with Judas Priest. And Judas Priest was my favorite band. I was such a big fan. So I couldn't believe when we got this tour in 86 and we always stayed friends. So when we were in uh, France talking in, you know, in our dressing room and actually then Rob was asking me what I'm doing. And I said, yeah, we're just finishing up a new album and stuff. We're almost finished. And then we both smiled at each other. And I said, Rob, are you thinking the same? And he said, yes. And I said, shall we do something together? He said, yes, it's about time. We have been friends for such a long time. Let's do something. So I said, oh, man, I'm, I'm so happy. OK. And then he said, what kind of song would you like? And I was born and raised with the British wave of new heavy metal. Uh, and I love British steel so much. That was yes. one of my favorite records. And I did one time a duet with Udo Dirk Schneider on Breaking the Law. So that right. song, not a possibility, but I said, Rob, I would love to do Living After Midnight. He said, OK, let's do it. I love that song, too. So we did Living After Midnight. And then uh, Rob said, you know, there's one song I always wanted to do with you. And I said, really? He said, yes. And I said, what, what is it? And he said, Total Eclipse of the Heart. Let's do a metal version of Total Eclipse of the Heart. And I thought, wow, you know, this is a killer song, Jim Steinman production. And yeah, and then we did both. And 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 Total Eclipse of the Heart has a beautiful uh, video. If you guys want to check it out, you know, wherever. On your I'll, I'll put it under the link. I'll put it in the links uh, below. Yeah. Yes, do it. It's, it. it's so cool. And he looks so stunning. And... Yeah, and to me, you know, it means the world because, yeah, when I started in the early 80s and Priest was it, like Priest and Dio, Motorhead, Metallica. Yeah, and I had the chance to tour with everybody, to record with everybody. My first duet was actually with Lemmy Kilmister. That was in 2000. And so I'm really blessed. And uh, and I was always treated perfect. I mean, it was it was always with a lot of love and respect and stuff. So... So I never felt that I was any different. It was, you know, just like back in the day, there weren't so many female musicians or singers, but I always felt like, you know, I was I was definitely part of the family and um, we had a great connection right from day one. With uh, Total Eclipse of the Heart and Bonnie uh, Tyler, is Bonnie Tyler? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. God, I, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know why I questioned myself, I, I knew it. But have you seen the movie Old School? No, no. There's a scene in it where there's a comedy band called the Dan Band, and they do a version of Total Eclipse of the Heart, and all this the music, the the actors are dancing, and there's big, they're big name actors. I'm, I think it's Vince Vaughn's it, and, and maybe or something, or um, Will Ferrell. But anyways, they oh. sing Total Eclipse of the Heart, Total, like drop. He drops f bombs in there. You got to see the clip. It's hilarious. The, how oh, that song is is just yeah, everybody two together and Will Ferrell oh god he's my favorite he's my favorite actor comedian yeah <laughs> um me me as well now I gotta tell you as a Canadian living on the border we've got someone here named Lee Aaron oh, I'm wondering she was coined the metal queen you're coined the metal queen and have you and Lee ever, you know, crossed paths behind backstage of a festival and just just dropped the mitts and just you know duked it out and decide let's decide who the metal queen is? <laughs> Actually, we always we always uh, loved each other, and um, I met Lee Aaron in the early eighties. I think I think we played our very first big festival together. It was in Belgium. It was called Heavy Sound. That was the festival where Slayer played the first time in Europe, I think. And it was a great bill. It was Slayer, Lee Aaron, Warlock. And we met for the first time and we immediately loved each other. We did a cool photo session, like really funny, really hilarious. And I just met uh, Lee uh, one year ago when we did uh, the Monsters of Rock cruise, you know, the big cruise yeah. trips with all the heads. So we met again and it was like, it felt like, like the good old days and I love her. I love her voice. I I think she was one of the greatest or she is one of the greatest singers. And, you know, her voice is like 
unbelievable. So I, I love her a lot, totally. And yeah, and she's super sweet and super nice lady. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she has a great following in Europe. Actually, in Canada, obviously, she didn't quite make the American market. She had a few hits in the states, but um, she's she's big in Europe. But no, that's that's great that you guys didn't uh, fight. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, there was not one person I did ever, you know, fight with. Usually, in the metal and in the rock world, everybody is really cool and you know, really family and yeah, and especially like yeah, somebody like the Aaron. Yeah, I love her. I love her. Here in Europe, you're right. Uh, especially in Germany, she has a big following and yeah, people love her a lot. Yes. So um, you were recording today. Yes, yes, I'm recording. I'm uh, working on our new DVD, um, Blu-ray, live CD. And we were actually mixing and fixing stuff. And I celebrated my big anniversary last year, one time in my former hometown, Düsseldorf, Germany, and one time in Wacken. And that was great, like 80,000 people going crazy. And we had many guests wow. there. Zoe Bella Donna was there. We did Antisocial and one of my songs, Race of Fist. Um, Mickey D of Motorhead and Phil Campbell of Motorhead. We did Ace of Spades and Love Me Forever. Now Mickey D in The Scorpions. And it was super, oh, it was so great um, people there. Udo Dirk Schneider was there. We did actually Breaking the Law together in Wacken. And uh, Hansi Kirsch of Blind Guardian, which I will see him. Uh, yeah, next weekend, they are playing Milwaukee Metal Fest as well. Yeah, and then we did one show in Düsseldorf. And actually, there's another great, great Canadian singer. She came to yeah, to celebrate with us, Elisa white Glues of Arch Enemy. Yes. She came all the way from Canada. It was so cool. And and actually, and the ex-singer of Arch Enemy was there as well, Angela Gosso, who's now the manager of Arch mm -hmm. Enemy. I think it was a historic moment that both ladies were on stage. We were all on stage together. We're singing All We Are. And Elisa did uh, All For Metal and Touch of Evil. That's a song of the Triumph and Agony album. You see it here. That's the, the big, um, that was like a limited edition. And that was right. one of my favorite records, Triumph and Agony. And I still love to play, you know, a lot of songs of Triumph and Agony. So Touch of Evil, that was a real treat. And she did the growl voice and oh, it was it was killer. So so you guys will probably see it next year, January, February. And it will be a big package, like, you know, with um, I think four vinyl picture discs, you know, cut out uh, everything, like, you know, old school vinyl and I think five, six CDs and yeah. DVD. That sounds like it could be a great package. You, you have my uh, address, right? <laughs> Just joking. What did you say? I said that'd be a great uh, package to have. You have my address, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, you will uh, be one of the first ones. They're all limited. And yes, if you like awesome. that stuff, I, I love stuff. And of the last record, I don't know if you've seen it, but we had great box sets as well and, and picture discs and stuff. And yeah, yeah, I did check out that on your site as well. Yeah, that is yeah. that is that is wild. That's beautiful. It almost and, look like um, those expensive plates. Ah, yeah, yeah. We got the Triumph and Agony um, album sleeve on on these plates. You mean for the record cover, uh, for the record player, right? No, well, no. I'm I'm saying the plates. You know, you buy these Victorian royal plates. Ah, I was saying they look like plates, really, because they're so shiny and. All right. But I understand I, what you're saying. There is vinyl, obviously. Yeah, um, actually, I uh, I misunderstood. Yeah, we have like one thing. You put it on your record player, and it's beautiful. It's the Triumph and Agony cover, and then you put your vinyl record on it, and it sounds ten times better. I don't know how it works, but uh, I thought that's what you meant. But the plate, yeah, we have so many limited editions. God, I. I, yeah, so I think 22 records and like maybe 30 in a box set and stuff. So, yeah, and, and I wanted to show you the new one. That's the limited edition, the blue one, uh, because we talked about Rob Help. Can, can you hold it up higher? Oh, um, yeah. yeah, that's perfect. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Hey, you can see me in there, the reflection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, isn't that cool? <laughs> yes, it is. So I'll uh, I'll leave I'll leave all the links down below. Um, my friends watching, and uh, make sure you go to the merch and perch. Hey, that rhymes. 
merch and purchase merch and purchase anyways <laughs> so we're talking about females in the industry now and like it's it's just wild what's happening right now in the music business um i mean a lot of them you know, got gabby gonsakova is is getting into not really metal but you got floor jansen um you know evanescence um hailstorm but one big thing came out i was listening to eddie trunk the other night and opening up for acdc um maybe people watching don't know yet is going to be the pretty reckless now have you have you met taylor momsen uh one time briefly actually on the monsters of rock cruise maybe three years ago but uh, we didn't we didn't really get a chance to talk because we had to go on stage. She came off stage, and actually, yeah, we um, yeah we were actually thinking about the ACDC tour would be great. But then we got the offer of Alice Cooper, so we are touring with Alice Cooper in October, in France and Germany, and so I'm so happy. But yeah, but we were actually trying for the ACDC tour as well. But then when yeah. When Alice said, okay, you know, let's do it. Then I thought, yes, you know, let's, so, let's not look any further. And yeah. So so tell us how, so we don't know um, on this side of the lens, how does that process work when you know that a band, the, a major band is going out and is looking for a support act? Do they contact a bunch of um, teams and say, you know, send out a vast amount of emails and if you're interested, you the please approach us. Or do you just find out, oh, ACDC or Alice Cooper is going on tour. Let's send them a tap on the back and say, hey, we'd be interested. Does it work like that? Actually, every tour, I must say, is different. And uh, with Alice Cooper, we got one email from our booking agent. And he said, hey, Alice Cooper would like to have you guys on tour. And I thought, wow, you know, it was it was super cool. It took one phone call, so that was great. Um, in other cases, sometimes, yeah, the booking agencies, they have to talk, or sometimes, you know, record companies, managers, they talk. But usually with us, it was always pretty easy. And and I have to tell you that story. Uh, one of my favorite um, singers was Ronnie James Dio and actually and I did one time a cover version of his song um, Egypt the Chains Are On oh, and yeah. I think it's really good and uh, and then I was in New York in Manhattan doing another album it was the Calling Wild album in 2000 and the guy from the record company he called me up he said hey Doro there's the listening party of Ronnie James Dio's new album Magica would you like to go and I said oh yes I would love to go so I went to this club and I saw Ronnie and I said, hi. And he said, Doro, I always want to tell you, I love your version of Egypt, the chains are on. It's so cool. I always play it on the radio when people ask, hey, what kind of song would you like to hear? And I said, really? And I thought, oh man, it's so great. You know, when, when somebody you love, when someone says you did good, oh, it meant so, so much. So I, you know, I told him that we are just doing a new album, so on, so on. And his album was fantastic so i uh, did my first interviews to promote promote our new album it was calling the wild and then the lady it was a uh, radio station in la and she said Dora, so what are your plans are you going on tour or you know do you have any plans you know opening up for somebody and i said well no plans yet but i would love to do a club tour or maybe opening up for a big act and then she said what would be your you know your favorite act to go out with and I said, Ronnie James Dio. And she said, that is so funny. He's calling me in two hours. We have another interview. And, you know, and she said, shall I mention it to him? And I said, okay, why not? Yes. And then a couple of months later, we were on tour together in America. It was the best tour. It was like oh, two or three months. Um, Ingve Meimsen was on his tour as well. And then we became really great friends uh, because I did a tour with Ronnie James Dio in 87, but uh, we couldn't speak English so well. So it was just like, hey, have a good show. And, you know, and uh, and then in 2000, we could have really great conversations, many laughs. He was super funny. He had such a great dark humor. It was awesome. So um, so it went like this, just like, you know, two two friends, two musicians meet and then, you know, and sometimes, you know, by accident, you know, another person, you know, says, you know, how about this idea? So so it could go either way, you know, sometimes it's a long process and I love it when it's really like, you know, 
nice and easy. And yeah, yeah this is Cooper, one phone call, and I was on fire. I said, yes, let's do it. Yes. So that was so cool. And I love I was, him. Great, yeah, great. I, was, I was interested because I'm, I'm looking to hook up with a major act because I play a little guitar. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so date night with Doro. Okay. One of the things, and I've listened to your music for decades, um, I knew a bit of your history. One of the things that's mainly on your Wikipedia is um, you're never married. No, no, never married. No kids? No, no kids, no, no. no metal um, family. What I'm married to, metal and the fans. And, uh, and I think I couldn't do both, like having kids, you know, having a family and then doing doing touring, you know, every year and doing records. So I decided when I was 24, then one day I woke up, I was living in Manhattan. And one day I woke up and I thought, okay, today I will choose my priorities. And it was super clear. I wanted to do music for the rest of my life. And yeah, and that was it. And So the reason I'm asking is, um, so next week, Friday, actually this week, um, you'll be playing um, Milwaukee. Um, if yeah. I get a chance to get down there, I'm just curious, what would a date night with Doro consist of? <laughs> oh, probably a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, well, I would love to invite everybody to the concert because that's what I do best. I think mm -hmm. live being on, making people feel good, empower them, you know, give them good energy, you know, and good metal power. So, you know, so that would be nice and sweaty and hot. And then afterwards, you know, having a nice drink backstage, you know, I don't drink much alcohol or actually almost never. But to me, like, you know, like, yeah, a coffee would do it, <laughs> some water, maybe, you know, a little drink. And then everybody can just like feel free to to clean out the mini bar <laughs> and you know, <laughs> yeah. whatever they, they feel and, you know, and having a good time and probably talking to the band and, you know, the guys in our crew, they're always pretty cool too. So, you know, so just, yeah, just like, being a big family, you know, and, you know, and talking about metal, talking about, you know, music. I always like to find out which songs they like the most or why and or which record and or which other bands. So um, that always talking about music, that's always what I what I like the most, too. Yeah. So but let's say we took music out of the equation. Let's what, what do you have? Is, what do you do for a pastime if you just want to get away from music? Are you like a coffee? um aficionado do you like to go to museums um do you like fine dining like what what would the other side of doro be that the fans don't know about actually i i love sports i i love sports and i love boxing um i'm um, i'm doing kung fu eskrima thai boxing uh wing chung uh, so i love that you know to yeah keep active and stuff you know and it's always good when you do a nice long tour that you know your body and your mind is in good shape so i love sports and uh and i'm just writing a new anthem for a friend of mine she was 13 years world champion it's a lady her name is regina halmisch so that's why i'm in the studio as well you know working on that stuff and um yeah so sports and and i love animals so so Whenever I can, I always try to connect with people who who save animals, you know, from, you know, like really bad situations. So that's worldwide. We're all connected. And that's the reason why I turned vegan many years ago. And and all the, the stage clothes, that's all vegan leather. It's, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are all like, and it looks nice. It's It feels great. And no animal has to has to be harmed for for me looking, you know, like, you know, like it's it's actually my my working clothes, so I, right. I love it. But yeah. yeah, but I became vegan because of that. And all the stage clothes, I think 20 years ago, I tried to find different materials, which was pretty uh, difficult 20 years ago. Now it's super easy, you know, you have great material. It, it, it looks exactly like leather. But 20 years ago, it was actually very difficult to find, but... Uh, but but I found I found stuff and I have you know many nice you know people who like to you know do new stage clothes and stuff and so you know and and it's all vegan so I'm I'm really yeah I'm making sure that everything 
yeah. That's awesome, Dora. Um, I won't keep you much longer. I'm going to ask you a question. This is just one of the weirdest things. What time is it there in Germany? Oh, uh, oh God. Uh, okay, we started at 10. So I would say 10 30, 10 30 about. So it's six hours, like six hours from uh, six hours um, ahead. Okay. Um, so I would, the thing is, um, the, the, some unusual interviews I have to do at odd hours, like Angry Anderson, you know, from um, Rose Tattoo. Well, he's yes. in Australia, which is 16 hours ahead. So I think I had to get up at like 6 a.m. to do the interview, but I'm going to do it. But this is the very <laughs> first time, I think, out of hundreds of interviews I've done that the um, interviewees, publicists come back and suggest 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. And I'm like, what? I was thinking, are you like a night night hawk or an insomniac? Yeah. Or? Totally, totally. When I record songs and records, I always, my best power hour is one o'clock in the morning. I, I feel the best. And and when I hop on stage, like the later, the better. And sometimes when we play South America, like Brazil, sometimes very late stage time, I love it. All the guys in the band, they say, oh my God, we're getting tired. But I just, I wake up about 12 o'clock midnight. And then, yeah, and then I could go to whatever, you know, six o'clock in the morning, I usually go to bed. And then, and then I sleep as long as I can, like in the tour bus, Sometimes it's impossible to fall asleep and, you know, to, to get some good sleep, which it's important for a singer that your voice and stuff, you know, get some rest. But, uh, yeah, it's tough. But I always like to yeah, to stay up all night and work all night. I have the best ideas, too, when I think about songs or song ideas or writing lyrics. It's always late at night. And, yeah, I, I like it that way. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm yeah. I'm so glad to have this interview. I'm actually interviewing your drummer tomorrow. I'm not sure if you know. Oh, cool. Yeah, say hi to Johnny. Oh yes, man. Yeah, I miss him so much. He is uh, on tour with another band, so he will be not playing with us Milwaukee Metal Fest. Oh, okay. But he will be in heart and spirit with us, and yeah, he's he's my brother. I love him. I love him so much, and he's in the band for over thirty years now. And we always have been friends, and and he's great. And now we have uh, in Milwaukee, we have uh, Danny Piselli, great drummer. We played M3 Festival together, so he already knows all you know all our vibe yes. and songs is really cool. Right. And Chris Caffrey, the guitar player from yeah. Sabotage, oh, he will be with us. Bill Hudson, my guitar player. He's the guy who was born in Brazil and he has that Yeah, he was with, uh, I interviewed Bill years ago um, by phone, but um, he was born in, uh, yeah, he's with TSO as well, or he was with TSO. Right, right. Yes, yes. And yeah. And actually, yeah, I met him, uh, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago. And actually, uh, we wanted to play the Rock Power Festival. And, you know, and I called Chris Caffrey and then Chris, he had an accident or something, so he couldn't do it. And then his manager, he said, yeah, you know, there's another guy, you know, he could he could be perfect for the gig. His name is Bill Hudson. So I said, oh, I rather want to have Chris and stuff. But the manager said it's impossible because there was, yeah, there was something he had, he had a I think a bicycle accident, something really bad. So I said, okay, then let's let's try out Bill Hudson. Yeah, and Bill came and oh, he's awesome. He, he's fantastic. And then both together, Chris and Bill, it's it's great. And then my bass player Nick Douglas, and so it will be wild, and I can't wait. And yeah. <laughs> okay, a couple of quick uh, last questions. Um, really appreciate your time, by the way. I hope you enjoyed the interview and the little comedy things. Jolly, jolly. And I hope the listeners and the viewers enjoy it as well. And, you know, oh, I'm sure they will. Now, I used to tour and, and we hope we can tour next year. So just to let you know, to let everybody know, we will we will come to Canada very soon and stuff. So, Well, who's your favorite Canadian musician or artist? Do you have one? I would say Lee Aaron <laughs> awesome. and, and Elisa White Glues. And uh, I think she's awesome too. And wow, she has so much power and energy and looks stunning too. So so these two ladies, I would say, yes. That is great. 
Now, we already talked about um, people should subscribe, but if people have made it this far in the interview, let's just remind them, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? The opposite of unsubscribe? <laughs> subscribe, huh? Yes, everybody do as Dora Pesci, my great guest says, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, Dora, I'll leave links down below of um, your uh, site and your tour dates and all the, uh, so they can purchase the merch. Thank purchase you. the merch and um, you get all that information. And um, yeah, thank you very much for your time, Dora. Thank you very much. And here you see, let me say hi too. He's always, he's right, always next to me. And yeah, and all these other goodies too. But let me, he is most important to me. And yeah, so yeah. And right thank on. you so much. And I hope I will see you festival tour wherever and wish everybody the best and yeah it was super nice to talk to you thanks Doro.